Hi folks, this is activity ZH09 and uh, up until today we have done problems uh, where the, 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 the physics that was put in the problem was fairly straightforward. For example, when the velocity of a, a, a box such as what you see here, this was the first problem that we did, was uh, linear or, you know, so, so basically uh, the, the, the formula that we use in order to specify the position as a function of time could be written as a single line. Uh, and that, that happens because uh, that happened because actually there was a formula, there were no conditions on time. According to all values of time, that formula was applicable. However, what we want to do today is start solving problems where Actually, depending on what time frame you look at, things change. For example, if you look at the expression for this, between time 0 and 3, the, the box 6 uh, sits stationary. Uh, between time 3 seconds and 7 seconds, the box starts moving with a given velocity that you see here, which is 5 over basically 4. Okay. In other words, the height, height here versus this time duration, 5 over 4, with that velocity. And then after seven seconds, it actually the, the direction of the velocity reverses and it kind of goes back to where it started for. So this kind of a thing cannot be written as distance equal to a very simple expression on the right hand side with a single line which involves time. Here you have to write some if statement. If time is between zero and three, that is the position. If time is between three and seven, Here's the position. And finally, if time is between 7 and 10, another expression for the time. <clears throat> it, it all boils down to you writing the program. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and uh, uh, start with a, with a, with a uh, problem. That, this was the very first problem that we did, actually. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the product. It's going to involve only two parts, a, a base, or let's say a track, and a, 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 and a block, okay? So let me, uh, let me go ahead and insert a new part in there, and I'm going to call this thing the track, right-click properties, track. You can also call it the base if you want, track and track. All right, I make it. All there is is a box. So uh, double click on this on a convenient plane on that plane. I will sketch a rectangle such as that. This is going to be my track. Exit. And we're going to pad it. Uh, I don't know what my units are. So let me go if I dimension this thing, for example, if measure this thing, see what it says. Uh, this says. Uh, Millimeter. So that's a millimeter. Why don't I go and change my units to inches? Because this problem is given in terms of inches. Where is that? Right there, in terms of inches. So I go, <coughs> I go here, uh, tools, options. Okay, parameters and measures. And let's plot, uh, uh, let's do two things. Units for uh, distance, I'm going to use... Uh, inches for velocity for velocity let me get the velocity because at some point i'm going to plot some kind of velocity let me uh, filter filter this in alphabetical order so velocity well let's do the acceleration while we're at it uh acceleration acceleration inch per second squared, because we're switching to inches. And finally, velocity, I'm going to change that to inch per uh, inch over second, inch per second. So let's see now, velocity. <clears throat> velocity right there, inch per second, it was already in that unit. Very good. Let's go ahead. Now, how, how big is this? Let me just check. Uh, uh, at 1.7 inches, that's why. Exit, and we're going to pad it 
Uh, I'm going to pat this thing by uh, perhaps maybe uh, 15 inches. Okay, good. There we are. So now we're going to insert our block. So insert a new part. I'll call it the block. <clears throat> Block and block. You say okay. Let's go make it on a convenient plane. I'm not saying vertical plane. I will sketch. Okay, a rectangle. Exit. Okay, and let's pad this thing by uh, I don't know one inch or something like that. Yeah, that's fine. Seven, eight, seven, eight, seven. Okay, so uh, all the way to the top. Let me go to assembly design. Uh, anchor the base, anchor the track right there, and coincidence between this edge and that edge, the big edge and coincidence between this vertical plane and that vertical plane. Let me cancel that for a second. Did I create that? Yeah, I created this. Okay, good. Coincidence between this plane and that plane. Actually, I'm not sure, can hang in there. I'm not sure what is it that I actually put in there. No, no, notice that this is between a, a plane and a line, that's why it was complaining. Okay, so that's really not what I want to delete this. I was in a rush. Okay, so coincidence between this edge. Okay, there we are. Uh, this edge and that edge. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move this thing up so that I can see what I'm doing. So let me translate this thing up. Okay, good. So coincidence between this edge and that edge. Okay. And coincidence between this plane and that plane. Good. So that's going to become eventually a a prismatic jump. Okay, good. All the way to the top. Uh, switch to digital mockup, DMU kinematics. Get the magic wand out. Or a uh, new mechanism, mechanism one, auto create. Okay. And this is going to be a single prismatic joint. You can see that if you double click on it and make this thing length driven, I'll go zero to, uh, I don't know, 100 inches. I think this was only 20 inches. So I'll make this thing roughly 20 inches or 15 inches. And also that the direction is that way. I want to flip that so it goes to the right. You say, okay, mechanism can be simulated. Needless to say that you can do that manually. You can see this. Sure. Exit, reset. Okay, so now what we want to do is to put some physics into the problem. However, the physics is not in the form of going to f of x and say position equal to dot, 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 dot. Okay? Remember, that's how we did the exercise one. Because the position depends on, the formula for position depends on time. So let me cancel that. What we do, what we have to do is to go to start, knowledge where, knowledge advisor. So start, Knowledge where knowledge advisor and there is a toolbar here which looks like this uh, and that says rule. If you look at it carefully, it says if x y blah blah blah. There's like writing a program. Here is the rule number one. There's only one rule that I'm going to have, but you can give these different rules names. There is a creation, date of creation, who created it, etc. So you say, okay. So this pops up, okay? Now, if you click on the mechanism, only the stuff related to the mechanism is, is coming up. So 
I'll go to the next line. I say if okay now if time if time is less than is less than three seconds three s notice do not forget to put an s there because when you write three only it doesn't know what the unit is it has no unit and you cannot compare time mechanism slash kinematic time with something that doesn't have any unit. That's why when you write it like that, you write down if it's less than three seconds, then it's return. I didn't mean then, <laughs> it's return. And if you click on the length, it gives you the command that's associated with this mechanism, right there. I selected length, here's the command. Double click on it, and the formula for it is equal to. It's not a single simple formula, but it's equal to, you look at, you look at the problem here, if time is less than three seconds, position is zero, it doesn't move at all. So it's equal to zero. Don't forget to put IN there because left, left side is inches, right side must be inches. Else, if, once again, time is less than Less than, uh, what is this? Less than seven seconds. Okay, you see this? If time is less than seven seconds, the velocity is going to be five over four, right? Five over four. So we're going to say, if this, enter, length, Double click, length is equal to, where does it start? At zero inches, it doesn't matter whether you write this or not, plus parentheses, five over four, close it, times one inch underscore S. Now, <clears throat> Let me hit enter. Else, else, you look at the formula here. Else, if it's bigger than uh, seven, uh, seven seconds, it, it goes to the position five inches and then it drops down. So it's going to go uh, then, else, enter. Here's the mechanism, equal to five inches, minus, because it, it, it goes to the left, right? So look at the velocity of going to the left. If you look at this, it's going to be five inches divided by three seconds, five over three, okay? So parentheses, five over three, close the parentheses, times one inch underscore s. Now, if there are no syntax errors, and there may be, who knows? There are no, if there are no syntax errors, this thing closes. So let me close this and see what happens. Obviously there are syntax errors, so let's see something I forgot, and I know what I forgot. In fact, something major I forgot. You go here, you go to the room. Okay, so let's see. One thing I completely forgot, notice that I forgot to multiply this thing by, uh, I forgot to multiply this top line, this thing by times, by times parentheses, Kin time minus minus three s. Please sit down and look at what I have done. Notice that when time is three seconds, this whole thing with times parentheses again time minus.
minus actually yeah, minus seven second okay so let's see now for example if time is equal to hypothetically two if time is equal to two position must be zero right here if time is less than three seconds position equal to zero now suppose the time is not uh, not two but it's four so one second has surpassed has passed by so it's going to be four minus three so that's why i have to subtract the shift times the velocity which is five over four okay so let's say okay there must be another syntax error let's see now what else have we done here uh invalid syntax do you want to go back yes so let's check that what is this okay that goes Let's make sure I didn't make up make any mistakes here. Uh, let's add seven. I'll say okay. Good. That was an underscore at the very end. Now, look at what happens. This is how I wrote it. We can check this later on by plotting something. And if we get this graph, it means that we have done it correctly. But there's something else that I want to show you, and that is if you go back to the slides, you see that. How we write these things is very fussy. What I just did was actually this, this kind of a thing. You can, you can write this thing if you want, instead of uh, uh, five over four times one uh, inch per second, you can write it like that. But do not, do not, for example, try to write it as five over four times y uh, inch underscore s. It's very fussy. I mean, it's not fussy. It's just that this is wrong. This thing is not correct. All right. So let's go back here. All right. So we have our law right there. All right. And we go simulation with laws. Simulation with laws. 10 second period. So what happens is that the first three seconds, this block stays put where it is. And then after three seconds, it moves to the right. To some location and after seven seconds it goes back to the left to the where it started so let's plot it good now activate sensor since i didn't ask for anything that's okay i didn't i didn't create any sensor but i can always plot this see that i clicked on the activate sensor and i this is already there i didn't create any sensor ball rolling down the hill i didn't do that but this is the command basically. And if you say graphics, oops, uh, let me let me uh, uh, let me uh, uh, send it back. Clear the history. Clear the history. Is none. Okay. Play it and graph it. Oops. Oh, this said no. Sorry, this said no. Activate it. Send it back, clear the history, there is none, okay? Change this thing from no to yes. Play it. Graph it. I better get that curve, and I do. So this is a good check of whether I've done it correctly or not. Now, suppose we also wanted to plot the uh, acceleration of the block. Let's say that you wanted to plot the acceleration of the block uh, as time goes on. So close this, rewind that, say okay, go and create a sensor. Uh, so uh, reference product is the, the track and the point is uh, one of these corner points. You say okay, so we did create something, okay? So now we're gonna go simulation with loss activate sensor this is the one that is just going to give you the command that you put in but suppose that you want acceleration that that'll be acceleration direction uh, what would that be x yeah direction x so let's go either magnitude or that's like okay, acceleration direction x so let me let me do the magnitude linear acceleration uh well I, yeah actually let me do the following let me do the acceleration direction x linear acceleration direction x Okay, 
linear acceleration direction x play it graph you get two graphs let's see what these things are the yellow one is the command that you put in good the green one is the acceleration. Let's think about it first. The first three second acceleration is zero because the block goes nowhere. Okay. And the next, uh, uh, the next, uh, uh, between three second and seven second, the acceleration must be zero. Now, of course, uh, I don't get, I'm not getting zero here. You can see that. Uh, actually, should be acceleration should be uh, the derivative of that. Velocity is constant. Excel. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh yes, it should be zero. Sure, sure. Velocity here is z is constant. Five over four. Acceleration must be zero. And lo and behold, it is zero. And when it goes this way, again, velocity is constant. Acceleration is zero. And there we are with zero. If you, if these points are bothering you. If we zoom out so that you can see all the units and everything, then I suggest that you change the number here. Okay, so rewind, rewind, change this thing to something that you want. Maybe uh, let's try 200. Play it. It's moving, and then it's going to go back once you reach a seven second, it's going to go back. And then graph it. You see, uh, I didn't clear the history, so let me go ahead, rewind this thing again. Let's go ahead and rewind this. Clear the history because there, that's why I have double things showing up on top of each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, run it. Let me let me make this thing even uh, bigger. Okay. See, three second. It stop. At seven second. It's gonna stop and go back. Close this. Once it reaches the end, we're gonna say graphics. You see these spikes are gonna get sharper. So essentially because when you think about it, the acceleration is, uh, because things change at this, velocity suddenly changes. The velocity suddenly changes. In reality, it's, you know, uh, you cannot go from zero in no time, for example, to something. That's why there are these spikes here. But aside from that, we have model the problem correctly. Uh, not that this is wrong, it's just that physically it's impossible you go from zero to something. And that's what I have assumed in those formulas, assume that it goes from zero velocity to some constant, constant velocity, which is obviously it has to be infinite acceleration in order to, to happen. But aside from that, this is all okay. So that was our first problem of doing uh, uh, these uh, programming type of uh, approaches. Now, here are the issues that we came up with. We have to be very careful about how to input stuff, okay? And this is always true in the case of writing a program. We have to make sure syntax makes sense, units makes sense, et cetera, okay? Eventually, I did it like that. Worked fine, oh, this, no, sorry. Eventually, I did it like that. This is okay. This is okay, except that instead of writing five over four times one inch underscore S, I wrote it like this, which the easier way was to write it like this, like so. I'm not saying I prefer this over the other one. All I'm saying is that the fact that those two are equivalent, but when you try to take shortcuts and write it in other forms, things didn't work out, okay? You have to practice on this thing, uh, there's no guarantee. The second thing that I did, uh, I plotted this command for you. And how did I do that? I activated a sensor. That command, I turned it from no to yes. I neglected to do that a few times. So eventually I realized it said no. And then you get this. And then you can plot anything versus anything. 
okay, as long as you ask for it. So I created a, a sensor associated with this tip, all right, and then which happened to be uh, uh, velocity in that x direction, or sorry, acceleration in the x direction, and uh, plotted it. And I came up with uh, zero, essentially, except for that, those, those short, short jumps, which can be justified. You cannot go from zero velocity to 504 inch per second. That requires infinite acceleration that for that sharp corner. Okay. When you start your car and, uh, and you, from a stationary position, you, you say that I reach, uh, I don't know, 10 kilometers per hour, per hour or 10 kilometers per second, can happen. Uh, then uh, it, it, that cannot happen in no time. Good luck.